So Drew is a, prof can I call you a professor? I don't know, he's just a good guy. He was my, where's the red light? <laughs> it's not red anymore. Uh, why is our tally light not coming on um, from the anyway, middle? Anyway, so Drew was just on the Fronos Photo Raw Talk. He uh, is a tremendous photographer, and he was one of my best teachers ever in college. Wow. Wait, so this is the man that taught Fro? No, I was taught before him, but still. <laughs> but still. I, I still owe him a lot because his teachings are incredible. I could probably benefit from some of that wisdom, Drew. How's it going? Excellent, excellent. How many, how many students do you have coming up today? Half of my class is coming up today, but all through Saturday, so a good portion. Tell so, me what, you, what kind of things do you teach? I teach fundamentals of photography this semester, and then going forward next semester, I teach photojournalism. Wow. And we actually have a brand new club at our school, a National Press Photographer uh, Charter membership we have now, and we have a new club starting soon. So it's how do How do, uh, I mean, is everyone a photojournalist nowadays just by the definition of the fact that anyone can publish anything online? Or what does it take to be a real, our, legitimate photojournalist? Our photojournalist is more of a public relations slash photojournalism documentary. So it's everything put into this. So when you say photojournalism, the ways of newspaper and things like that. Now we do more things like Patch.com, students are shooting for. Uh, we're tied in with QVC and Network. Patch.com? Yeah, it's an AOL it's news network. It's all around the country. Oh. And every, like, every area city. has a little area you know, for them to shoot. And it's local news for the students. So it's almost like a local paper electronic feed. Oh, okay. So. Well, what, what's good about what they teach, they start with fundamentals, but you're still doing black and white darkroom. You're Wait, still going you, into the dark room. You, you literally go in and develop film? Absolutely. The basics, yes. We don't get it, don't we, those chemicals give you cancer? No, we want to I get, don't know anything about it. We, we, we get it right in the camera from the beginning to teach them to become professional photographers. Uh, so less time wasting and editing and things like well, that. Well, you so. know, some people's philosophy is we'll fix things. it in post. But you really can't uh -huh. do that. I mean, one of the That's things I struggle with is sometimes I'll, I'll get the composition that I, the way I want and I'll screw something up. Yep. And then I'll go into Photoshop. I'm like, uh, surely, please, God, can I fix this? Uh, no. And you just can't. <laughs> sure. Don't be that guy, as Zach Arias likes to say. The thing I like to relate to is, let's say, a lot of people go on vacation. They're looking to get that one great photo. When we slow the students down into traditional film, let's say they have one roll of 36. They're not looking just to get one great shot on that 36. They want all of them to be good. And the ones that are wrong, we want to make sure how to get them better. So it slows down the process, but we want to get it right in the camera from the beginning. And these Photoshop tools are fantastic, but it's just, it, it makes another tool to make us better. It's a end. crutch, right? Exactly. It, it yep. could be used as a crutch, or it could be used to take something good and make it better. You got yep. it. And if you want to hear more about a conversation that Drew and I had at Antonelli, you can <laughs> check out uh, fronosphoto.com slash podcast. Uh, it's episode, a couple episodes ago, but you'll see go, it's called Back to School. Back to School. We talked for about an hour. Okay, well, we don't have an hour, but I, I am curious, since we have a professional teacher here, I would like to know this. If, if we have people who are kind of getting started, mm -hmm. what are the first things you tell them they need to focus on? We just go basic, keep it simple. Uh, sometimes what we try to do is fit too many things into an image. Sometimes if you go into details and, and start very simple and go with that approach, even in portraiture as well too. So if it's just a scene you see, landscape, or a product shot, or family members, sometimes go in closer and you're gonna get the better shot. Come in tight detail worry in it okay just to start keep it very simple focus on one thing at a time exactly perfect yes. that and then move on yep. how important is my gear selection we're sitting here with all these ridiculously expensive cameras sure. do i do i i mean as a beginner do i really need to go out and get something big is it going to make a difference we we actually as i said have the traditional film at the very beginning so the students have all different cameras fixed focal length variable focal lengths we teach them to work with whatever you have and that's what I'm always telling everyone. We're problem solvers. That's what our business is. So whatever you give me, I will work with that. It's just a tool. Um, yeah. Can I get a better tool? Absolutely. But there's restrictions with some tools, and you're always going to make the best of what you have. So that's true. It's just a Jared, do you ever find that no matter what camera and lens you take out, you seem to want a different one at some time? Like while you're shooting, are you like, no? Damn it! I wish I had that other lens. <laughs> no. For me, the thing is whatever I'm shooting with is what I'm focused on shooting with. Like, I like to anticipate which lens I should have on so that when that image presents itself, I've, I've thought about it before. I'm ready for it with the lens that I have on. So that's why, like, one of the things is I don't crop. And part of that is being prepared with the right lenses. 
that I even if even if I went out and had one lens to shoot with, I would not even it would not cross my mind that hey, I wish I had the other lens because my focus is on getting it right with that one that lens one. that I took with me, sure. and that's the challenge of it because it doesn't matter what you take, whether it's your iPhone, whether it's even this Instax two. 12 or what are they called? Uh, 210. Whatever you're shooting with should be. That thing is awesome, by the way. Nice. Check these out. We'll get out. a picture of you. Nice. Actually, we could probably just do this. So I know. You should know, take one of the it. people out here. Okay, I got to say. So we're wrong? sitting up. No. <laughs> there you, you go. Drew? I'm yeah. sitting up here with a couple of serious pros. Uh, there we and go. And I, I would call myself kind of a, an uh, avid amateur. You know, I don't actually take money for photography, but I'm, I make a good shot once in a while. But I'm curious, all you guys standing around there, how many of you are like me that you go out and you take, if you take only one's lens, do you ever feel like, God, I wish I had a different lens? I, I do that all the time. I have a hard time focusing on, I, I always keep thinking, what am I missing? Sure. How, how could I, uh, maybe I could be doing this better. I think Do you hear that from a lot of students? Is yeah. that something that as you get better, you stop thinking that what, way? What's going to happen is you're going to start feeling more comfortable. What I often say is when you start getting more understanding of the technical information, the artistic side comes out and you relax more and you're just more comfortable at yourself, what you're shooting with. As Jared said too, sometimes using a fixed focal length lens, you don't have that variable of changing that lens to something else. Mm. It has to be physically you. And often what happens is when you have someone shooting their picture, they're zooming and staying in that same spot shooting 20 shots where if you have that fixed, I'm going to want to move around. I can't sit still to begin Drew, with. sit down. So I mean, geez, what you're, I need you're to leaving do, the camera. I have to come in close <laughs> sometimes where I get to move to a different angle to get something that's going to incorporate better. I like to call that foot zooming. Yes. Right? you you got to zoom with your feet. Exactly. It's a workout program as well. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go, Drew. You only brought one lens with you to New York. I did. What did you bring? What's, what lens uh, did you bring? I brought the 14 to 24 for a, a specific purpose that we're going to be going and shooting video in booths. And I, I have the 24, which is good, but the 14 is ultra wide for doing some other things. But I just I knew what I was shooting, and that's what I'm prepared to do. Yep. So that's why I only brought one. And you have to travel light yep. when you're traveling. So sure. Cool? You going up in any helicopters today? No helicopters today, Drew, are you? No, not today. Not today? <laughs> All right. I'd like to try that sometime, but I might throw up. But then we can just open the door and just ride out the side, right? No problem. They'll probably charge you for that. Yeah. Okay. Cool? Good. Well, thanks for coming on, Thank you on, for coming Drew. on. We no really appreciate we gotta it. we got to unlatch you. Leora, are you ready to yeah, unlatch? Yeah, Leora will take care of you. Nice oh, and there's you. your website on the screen. Oh, yeah. Antonelli Institute, right? Yes. Antonelli Institute? Sweet.